Hi everybody, it's Cheyenne and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another question and comments or where I replied, or not really reply to them. I guess answer your questions or comments. It's a little bit different because I'm not in scrubs today. I'm not in a scrub top. I'm actually wearing this really cool shirt that I got off of Boohoo that has all the Spice Girls on it. So yeah, I'm excited. So let's jump right into this and answer some of your questions or some of your comments oh my ipad doesn't want to let me in um i love all the comments that you guys are giving me on these videos i try to respond to the ones that i can or i'm going to keep doing these videos and responding to them and like i've said before i'm on an expert like dental assistant this is just my opinion um, and once again, I live in Oregon. All states are different, but oh, my hair is a little crazy today. I've been doing like errands all morning, but anywho, let's get into this video. So the first comment that I got was from Dominique Britton and it says, I'm going to become a dental assistant soon, but if you don't mind me asking how much was your first check, I know every office is different, but I'm just looking for an estimate. I haven't found a video where they exactly say. So in my video, or in one of my videos, I do say that I make $23 an hour now, but I do have, you know, about six years of experience. I have lots of certifications. You're not gonna start out making that amount of money um, unless you get extreme, extremely lucky, but probably not. Now in Oregon, the minimum wage right now, I believe is 10.50 an hour. So, when I first started out, I started at $11.50 an hour, and I believe the minimum wage was about $9.75 or $10 an hour. So my estimate is you'll make about a dollar or two above your state's minimum wage. What that would mean as for a first check, I'm not quite sure because taxes and everything are different. Now, this person, Neek Neek, said, in a private office with one doctor, how many assistants should be in the office? Now, Usually in a private office with one doctor or dentist, um, usually one dentist has two assistants because they usually will run two chairs. So every office is different, but they might run an office of exams only with hygiene and then it, it, an office. They might run a chair of ops, which is all treatment like fillings, extractions, and then another chair that is like cleanings, exams, and they'll usually run those side by sides. So they usually have two assistants. But I have worked in a private office where there's, you know, three, four, five assistants. It just depends on how many chairs they're running. But if it's a small private office, there's probably gonna be about two to three assistants. But again, every office is different. It's kind of hard to say. But when you get into clinics, clinics are gonna have multiple dentists and multiple assistants. But usually it's two assistants per dentist. Hope that answered your question. <laughs> I probably just blabbed on about that forever. <laughs> All right, next question. This is from Fur MS. Do you think temporary agencies are good for the practice? And then they also said, do you suggest shadowing for new assistants? So temporary agencies. I've only worked for one um, temp agency and it was when I worked, I already worked four tens. I worked Tuesday through Friday at an office and I just wanted to work on Mondays as well for the money and for the experience. So I signed up through a temp agency to only work on Mondays and then if an office contacted them and needed help on a Monday, they would let me know. I actually really enjoyed it. I think it's really important in dentistry and you'll kind of see this the more that you assist or the more dentists, assistants, hygienists you get to know, it's really good to get to know as many dentists and dental assistants or that dental community because that's how you're gonna get um, jobs or find out about jobs, people might recommend you. So I actually really like the temp agency that I worked for. The pay was always a little bit different because depending on what office they sent you to, I don't know if this is how it is with every temp agency, but you got paid what that office paid their assistants. So sometimes I get paid $16 an hour. One time I made like $23 an hour. It kind of fluctuates whatever that office is paying their assistants. But I think they're great if you wanted to fill in at other places, learn as much as you can. You know, you get to 
meet new dentists, new assistants, and if you build relationships with them, they can let you know about job openings or recommend you for a position. I think they're great. Um, just make sure that the temporary or the temp agency that you work for, that they take a cut from the dentist because they'll take um, a fee and you want to make sure it's not out of your paycheck. You want to make sure that's from the dentist. I know there are some that will charge you a fee. You don't want to work with those ones. You want to work for the ones that charge the employer the fee, not the employee. If that makes sense. Um, and then shadowing. I think shadowing is a must. I think it's great if you're even interested in dental assisting or being a dental hygienist. I think you should go to an office, watch them for a couple hours, watch them for the day. Also in school, you, well, at least my program, you had to do an internship. So I worked at an office for, gosh, I think like almost two months. I wasn't paid. I just did sterile, helped them clean rooms. I assisted a few times, but I think it's great because you can kind of get the feel and see if you're interested in it. But I literally just called up some offices, said that I was in the school program, said I was interested in dental assisting, and then they told me days I could come in and help or observe. Just make sure that you're wearing scrubs those days and that you are, you know, not showing up in like business clothes. I would wear scrubs and just prepare to either assist or do sterile or, you know, whatever. And just make sure you're not in the way. <laughs> <laughs> and you know talk to them ask some questions and yeah I think it's great shadowing is great I've also had a couple comments asking me to do certain videos um Tavi and Smith asked can you do a what's in my work bag video I would but it'd be like the boring <laughs> it would be such a boring video I don't know about other assistants but there's nothing really special in my bag um yeah, there's nothing special that I bring. I bring a water to work and a granola bar, and that's about it. <laughs> Some assistants, you know, they have like a pair of shoes that they only wear in the office, not outside the office. Um, but mine is really boring. Yeah, there's nothing exciting. But like I said with the shoe thing, a lot of assistants first starting out will have a pair of shoes that they only wear in the office and then they'll kind of leave at work in their locker or whatnot, just because you are, you know, there's stuff on the floor or they're contaminated. But I think as you work more in it, you just kind of are like, whatever, who really cares? Also, when I first started out, I bought like the fancy dance go shoes, like the big rubber, you know, sole, and they were so uncomfortable, I couldn't do it. Now, some people love them, but I just, no. They were not comfortable. I did not like them. I felt like a giant. So I just wear sneakers. <laughs> but whatever works for you. But yeah, it would be a really boring video. Otherwise, I totally would, Tavin. But it would literally be like a water bottle on a granola bar. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, someone asked if I could do a video. Acne, Daphne asked um, how to avoid to suck a patient patient's lip or mouth when I use HVE. That again is practice. You'll learn how to position your HVE. And I could try to do a video about talking about that. Um, actually, I'll bring one home and I'll try to talk or do a little video about that. I also, I, know, I can't talk today. I also want to do a video that someone commented on here too about matrix bands because those are really, really hard when I first started. I, it took me forever to figure out how those go on, but now I don't even think about it. I'm like, doop, 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 here you go. And during procedure, if a dentist asks for one, I'm like, doop, 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 and there you go. Like you don't even think about it anymore, but I will definitely do a video about HVEs and matrix bands um, because yeah, that is definitely something that can be helpful. Oh, someone commented, it said two listening one. I don't know, that's their name. It's not their name clearly, but. <laughs> I don't know if that's their name. It's not. <laughs> um, in one of my videos, maybe it was in pros and cons of dental assisting, they asked what's a soft reline. So you can get a certification to place soft relines in dentures. Now a soft reline is something that you put in a denture to help with the retention to make it stay in better. So Let's say somebody gets multiple extractions. They get like 
you know, teeth up top extracted, teeth on lower extracted. A lot of times you'll do an immediate denture. So you'll extract all those teeth and then they will get their dentures that day after the extractions. So they'll be sent home with their dentures. So there is a soft reline and a hard reline. Now we don't do a hard reline in dentures until all the tissue and the bone and everything is healed up. There's no inflammation. There's no, you know, like swelling. So we do a soft reline in what we say like a six month period until we do a hard reline because your tissue is going to be swelled up after your extractions. So at first your dentures are going to be very, very tight. Okay. And as you heal, your gum tissue is going to be less inflamed. Your bone is going to, you know, it does go away. It files down, it smooths down. So your mouth shape is going to change. You know, all in here is going to change. So that's why we don't do a hard reline because a hard reline is permanent. Assistants cannot do a hard reline. Um, the dentist will do the impression for that and a lab will do the hard reline. But with the certification for soft relines, an assistant can do that. This is not permanent. It can be taken out of the denture. And basically what it is, is you mix it up. It kind of looks like bubble gum. You spread it in the denture. The patient will put the denture in. You'll hold it in for about a minute or two and you'll pull it out. You'll trim off the excess. And there's like a thin gummy, like rubbery layer left in the denture. So it makes it stick better. There's better retention. It basically fills in the voids. Okay. So it makes the denture tighter. Now this will last for like hmm, about six weeks. So they might come in and get that done a few more times until they get the hard reline. So it is a soft liner that you can put in the denture that is removable. It is not permanent. That's what a soft reline is. And assistants can do that with a certification. Um, Simon asked, how many fillings have you had at the dentist? I've actually had about six fillings all in, they're all in my molars. Um, I'm not that great of a flosser, to be honest. I need to floss more. <laughs> yeah. I brush my teeth, but flossing I only do like mm, maybe twice a week. So I need to work on that. So don't judge me. <laughs> but yeah, I've had about six fillings done. I also had ortho as a child. So I had braces. I had headgear. Yeah, good times. So yeah. A lot of people be like, oh, you have such pretty teeth. You're so lucky, which I am. I have nice teeth, but I also wore headgear and had ortho and wasn't fun, but it, it pays. I mean, it works, but, um, yes, I've had about six fillings done. So someone asked, is it Layla? Would you consider dental assisting a stable life career? Now, I'm choosing this as my career. I love dental assisting. I would like to progress maybe into management, into teaching. Um, I've applied at some schools for like dental assisting programs to teach in them and stuff like that. So I'm hoping maybe one day, but I love dental assisting. Do I think it's something, so like I've said, I've been doing it for about six years. I have definitely noticed, you know, back pain, shoulder pain. I do think it's really hard on your body, but I'm trying to think of how to say this. If you choose to go in the dental field as a dentist, dental hygienist, dental assistant, it is very hard on your body. I mean, you have to think about the positions that you're sitting in all day, every day. And this is very hard to explain to people that are not in the dental field. They kind of think that you're just chilling out in a chair all day. But you're literally, as a dental assistant, I mean, and a lot of the time I'm standing too, but with your suction, oh, my tag's sticking out of my shirt. How cute. <laughs> what is all over my shirt? Anyways, but oh my God, my hair is a mess too. <laughs> so you're, you know, trying to sit in your chair with the suction. So you're gripping things all day. Also dental hygienists, they have heavy instruments that they're holding on all day to dentists. That's why they get carpal tunnel. Um, but it's really important to try to keep your posture the best that you can keep it. But even doing that, it's hard. It's hard on your back. It's hard on your shoulders. You carry a lot of tension. Um, so it's tough. Is this something I want to do for the rest of my life? Yes, 100%. I love dental assisting, but it is really hard on the body. So 
I think once I got older, I would definitely cut back my hours um, and work less. I work for dentists that are like 70 and still doing it. I don't know how they do it. There are people that have done this for 30, 40 years. They still do it. But you just need to make sure you take care of your body and really watch your posture. Get massages. Um, I don't really go to a chiropractor. They kind of freak me out. But I know a lot of people go to chiropractors. Just know that you're going to have to take care of your body and get massages. And go to a chiropractor if you believe in that. Um, Some people get acupuncture. Just things like that. You really have to watch your posture, um, which honestly, I'm not the best at. It's hard to be because, you know, as an assistant, you're catering to your dentist or, you know, whoever you're working with, your patient. Some patients can't be reclined back all the way because they have health issues or back problems. So, you know, you're accommodating them. Um, also, it's our job as an assistant to work around our dentist and, you know, make them comfortable. So sometimes you're in really awkward positions. Um, it's hard to avoid the carpal tunnel thing because you're holding on to suctions and air waters and passing instruments all day long. Um, but yeah, just listen to your body. But yes, I love dental assisting. And as long as you have a passion for it and you really enjoy it, I do see it as a lifelong career. But beware that it is hard on the upper body. It's hard on it. And just, you know, be a regular <laughs> with your massage therapist and get some massages done because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. So Alexa asked, what procedures do you perform slash help with the most at your current office? So again, I work in a, it's not really a clinic, but it's a corporation. So they have many offices. They have about 35 offices, but it's not a clinic but they do take um, a lot of different health insurances. So my office currently, I would say every day I'm doing fillings or extractions. I do, you know, maybe two root canal, well, not even that, maybe a root canal a week, maybe two if I'm the only assistant that's doing them or if you're the only EFTA. Um, and then crown preps, probably a couple a week, but most common is fillings and extractions. You're gonna do fillings, fillings and extractions probably every day. Now, some private offices, you're not gonna do as many extractions because you'll learn that different insurances kind of have different, um, you know, it's different patients, different clients. Um, the state insurances, you're gonna see a lot more people that haven't been the dentist in a long time, so they have severely decayed teeth. So they're gonna be getting a lot of extractions done. Um, but then people that do go to the dentist on a yearly basis that have that have good health insurance, they're going to be getting like fillings or like routine cleanings, things like that. So clinics, you're definitely doing a lot of extractions and fillings. Private offices, I definitely did a lot more fillings, bleachings, um, assisting with like, you know, doing the exams and the x-rays. But definitely fillings every day. You're going to be doing fillings all the time and then extractions, but yeah. Mostly crown preps and root canals a couple a week, maybe. And bleaching, oh my gosh, in my six years of dental assisting, I have done bleaching twice. Yeah. People don't really bleach their teeth at the offices, or like at dental offices hardly anymore, not that I've really seen. It's extremely expensive. You can go buy, you know, Crest White Strip at the store and they do just as well. So bleaching, I hardly ever do. Impressions, do, do, you do a lot of impressions, especially in clinics because people are getting dentures or partials, things like that. So Gio asked, do you think it's worth getting into considering the pay is low when you start? I'm 28 years old. I, if you are passionate about dental assisting and wanna get into it, get into it. I think it's great. I think it's a great career choice. I know some people disagree with me on this in the comments, but I have never had an issue finding dental assisting jobs. They're always posted, especially since the whole Obamacare thing happened and a lot of people got health insurance. There's been a boost for dental and I can, I really agree with that because I worked in a clinic at the time when that happened and I saw, I actually helped a program 
you know, this clinic I was in was federally funded and I saw the boost in dental and we had meetings about how Obamacare has made our numbers jump and all these people got health insurance and these flow of patients we got. I saw a ton more job postings, you know, people were hiring more assistants. So I think there's always a need for dental assistants. I do think it's a great career to get into. You just have to be aware that when you get into it, you're not gonna be making big bucks. You're not gonna be making a ton of money. Um, it takes experience, it takes knowledge. There's a lot of learning to do. It's also about finding the right office. You know, you're not gonna jump into it and make $23 an hour. Um, I try to keep it really real with you guys in my videos and it's gonna take you a couple of years of experience and knowledge to get to that point. Um, you can't go into an office fresh out of school and be like, I want $25 an hour. They're gonna look at you like crazy because to them, you don't have anything to offer. You don't have any experience, you don't have any knowledge, you don't have any, you know, you can't do, I mean, unless you leave school with it, but most people don't leave school with certifications to do soft reliner sealants. To them, you're just someone that's gonna help them like clean rooms, set up procedures, you're not like valuable to the office when you first start out. Start out. Um, so it does take a couple years, but if you're passionate about it, if it interests you, I would definitely go to an office and shadow, make sure it's something you wanna do, see what they do, because I think a lot of people have a misconception of what dental assistants actually do. I have been told that I do a lot of weird things and I'm like, no, I don't do any of those things. Or they tend to think that you're like a receptionist. I don't know. People think we do really weird things. So definitely go in office shadow, but I don't think you're ever too old to do something if you're really passionate about it. Now, if you're just strictly going into it for the money, this job's not for you. If you're just trying to find something to make a lot of money, dental assisting is not the job for you because you need to be compassionate. You have to be a hard worker and you're not going to make a lot of money in the beginning. So if you just want to make a lot of money, I would not get in dental assisting. So Jessica asked, does um, dental assistants or do they get benefits in a 401k? Again, this depends on the office you're in. Most every office I've been in offers benefits in a 401k. The only office that didn't is private. Private sometimes, and to my experience, the benefits are not that great because they're not a corporation. You have a dentist that's paying for them. Um, or you're paying out of pocket a lot more for your benefits. But yes, in my experience, there's benefits in a 401k. I'm not saying that's every office. You definitely wanna ask that when you're applying for the position. Because um, if you're applying for, for a position and say they only wanna offer you like 18 bucks an hour, and say you made $18 an hour, or say you made 17 at your last office, but this office is offering you 18 and you're like, ooh, a dollar raise, great. But the new office might not have as great as benefits. They might not have paid time off or sick time. So you need to make sure you ask those questions before leaving your office or um, applying in an office. Make sure you know all those details. Don't be afraid to ask those questions because I've worked at offices where my health benefits range from $22 a paycheck to $250 a paycheck. So you need to make sure you're asking those questions and you actually are making more money by making a move and not just looking at the hourly wage because believe me <laughs> i much rather if you work at all the details there's been some times where i much rather make a couple of dollars less an hour because i'm paying less out for my benefits so make sure you ask those questions but yes mostly every office i've worked at offers a 401k and benefits it's weird because not every office i've worked at offers dental benefits now, people always think I'm crazy for this because you work in a dental office, but I've only worked in one office that offers dental, and that's the office I'm in now. Every other office I've worked in did not offer dental, dental coverage. Now, in the state of Oregon, your employer has to offer um, medical, and I think they have to offer retirement also, but they do not have to offer dental. So this is the only place I've worked for that I've actually had dental insurance and did not have to pay a full fee for cleanings and things like that. So yeah, ask about your benefits. They're very, very important. So Poo Poo Kaka <laughs> asks, are there any male assistants where you work at? Um, I do not currently work with any male assistants. I have in the past. 
there definitely there's not as many male assistants as there are females the dental world it's you know changing of course but the staff within the office like dental hygienists dental assistants receptionists they're mainly females as in the dentists are mainly males um, I have worked with a few female dentists but that's just kind of the way it is I think you know it's slowly getting out of that where there's a lot more female dentists which I think is great um, I worked with a few male assistants sterile techs you know people that, like clean your instruments and things like that a lot of times are male but there have been some female ones that I've worked with um, but yeah it's progressing it's changing but definitely not as many as there are females but there definitely are male assistants. All right guys, I hope you found this video helpful and I answered some of your questions. Please leave me comments and questions. I love answering them. Um, I'll try my best to answer them, give my honest opinion. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.